Hi, this is Connor, and you're listening to the No Mongo Podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to the No Mongo Podcast, a weekly show about all things skateboarding, and my name is Rick Beta. You can follow along on social media at Rick Beta, that's R-I-C-K-B-A-T-A, or also email the show, nomongopodcast at gmail.com. So it was announced recently that Des Moines, Iowa, namely Lauridson, L-A-U-R-I-D-S-E-N, Lauridson, Lauridson Skate Park, they're going to be hosting the 2021 Dew Tour, which happens to be the only U.S.-based global Olympic skateboarding qualified event. So only one shot in the U.S. this year, and it happens to be in Des Moines. So they got it. So basically, they're going to be cutting the red tape and offering like a grand opening for this park. If you haven't heard about the skate park, it is slated to become the biggest skate park in the country at 88,000 square feet. So, and that's a very big deal for Des Moines. I mean, they have the room, right? The space, but it's a very big deal as far as skateboarding because not only do they get to host the first, you know, Olympic qualifying event, you know, for this year, one first and only, they get to showcase that brand new shiny park, you know, before it gets all graffitied up and all that stuff. But very cool. 88,000 is no joke. 88,000 square feet, that is. And the location looks perfect. It's right by a river, so you have like the nice, beautiful backdrop. It's on five acres, and it's going to have plenty of concrete, like for many different skaters of you know all shapes and sizes. It's just going to be, it's going to be a destination point. And in regards to the Dew Tour, more than three hundred skaters are going to be competing at that park. So there's a park event and a street event, and for that, a chance to win, of course, the Dew Title, which is going to get them those. You know, the Dew Tour title, I should say, which earns them the valuable points towards, you know, their country's Olympic skateboarding team. So if you're not following along the Olympics, that's kind of in, in a nutshell. They have to qualify, have to earn points, they have to get in. You know, they don't just get picked, you know, just because. So well done, Iowa. Yeah. Do I have anyone tuning in from Iowa? You know, if so, let me know. How stoked are you on that news, for one? It's a very big deal. It really is. And all I have to say is be prepared to see an uptick in like skate tourists, skate tourism from all over the world. That park looks legit. Legit. I'm pretty sure the Skatosis crew is going to make a a nice trek to see that. So I know I'll see some footage shortly after they, uh, you know, open cut the red tape, as I said. But you even got Mike Valley out there, you guys. And his, he brought his street plant brand with him, too. So Iowa's, you know, it's, it's a big year for Iowa. They're on the up and up. they got a lot of good things going. And not only that, you get to pump your chest, you know, big time. By ha- now having, well, soon, as soon as they, it's official in May, the biggest skate park in the States. And that's right. They said, they said move over, Tex- or, Texas. Or better yet, they said, hold my beer, Texas which is going to soon be the second largest skate park. Was the first at 78,000 square feet, but 10,000 square feet makes a huge difference. We all know that. So I have to say is, or my question is, which state is going to step up next and shoot for 98,000 square feet? I'm kind of looking at you, Nebraska, the Dakotas maybe. Shoot, even Montana. Montana, I, yeah, you know what? I'm calling it now. In five years, ten years, I don't know. It, it, sooner than later, Montana is going to have the biggest skate park in the United States. I mean, they have all of that real estate, <laughs> all that open space. 200,000 square feet, maybe? I don't know. What could happen? But how big is too big? Though? You have to think about it. But for now, well, in, officially in May, Iowa will be the King Kong of skate parks. It's It's going to be official, so. If you live in the States and you hate on that, maybe go check out that park. But my home state of California still has the largest skate park at 68,000 square feet. That's Lake Cunningham, except they are still closed. And I know I've bitched about it on this podcast before. And I should just probably say they, yeah, let me say it now. They used to be the largest skate park in California because they're pretty much dead at this point. So rest in peace to Lake Cunningham. Whew. Some good memories there. 
so many good memories, you guys. I mean, it, I hated to see you guys go. But yeah, R.I.P. Lake Cunningham. Maybe. Most likely. Still not sure why they haven't opened up yet. Anyway. So yeah, which city is going to step up now in California and create the next great skate park? And what's with the number eight? I just thought about that. I was looking at my notes here. 88,000, 78,000, 68,000. I guess I need to reach out to Scott Loist on that. Is it some good luck thing? Am I just Did I just happen to write down three parks that have just the eights in them? <laughs> Will there ever be an 89,000 square foot park? Or is there some like OCD thing involved? Or does it have to bump up to 98,000? As I mentioned earlier. I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. Deep thoughts. Yes, deep thoughts indeed. But all this talk about skate parks and size, it got me thinking, like, where is the great, the, like, the largest skate park in the world? Not the greatest. Everyone has their opinion on it. But where's the largest? And I'll give you guys a second to guess. I, I did some research and I found it. You may already know. Yeah, you guessed it right. So I'm going to butcher this. But it's the Guangzhou Skate Park. And that's G-U-A-N-G-Z-H-O-U. Guangzhou? Guangzhou? China. I think I, I give me credit for that, you guys. They're officially the largest skate park in the world. It's 182,000 square feet. <laughs> the site is surrounded by 10 universities with a combined attendance of more than 160,000 students. Yeah. So, needless to say, they get a ton of traffic at that park and probably a bunch. And I, I mean, probably like more than two handfuls. I'm holding up two hands right now. A bunch of manga pushers on the daily. And it was also designed by Lance Mountain. So, very cool. But how big is too big, though? You think about it. 100, 182,000 square feet is about the size of four football fields. And that's kind of insane. <laughs> Can you imagine a, you know, hitting all the ledges, all the rails, all the bowls of that park just in one day? <laughs> you almost need like a, a tour guide or a map. Has anyone skated, actually, too? Has any, if, my first question, really, anyone in Iowa stoked and checking out that new park? And has anyone skated... This, the biggest one, the largest skate park in the world in China. Let me know your thoughts. And do you think we will see something bigger than that in our lifetime? Like I said, I'm looking at you, Montana. I don't know why. I just, for some reason, no pressure. No pressure. Get a sip of water if you don't mind. Keeping it on the topic of skate parks. Designs for the courses for Skateboarding's Olympic debut this summer have been released. As expected and known by many, there will be a park course and a street course. The park course looks it looks very similar to what we've seen before. It kind of reminds me of a Vans Park Series course. You see, you know, you know, like you can just picture whatever you're picturing in your head is probably correct. You know, something that basically Pedro Barros just destroys on the regular, right? So that kind of park. But it's the street course that I want to talk about mainly here. <laughs> that's, that's the key. But if you haven't seen the proposed design images, I'll put them in the show notes. Click on that link right now, actually. I'll give you a second. Check out the park course first, okay? As I mentioned, it looks very similar, but with some necessary tweaks. I mean, it will most likely be like a bit bigger as well, so which makes keeping speed a challenge, or it will make keeping speed a challenge for the skaters, you know, unless you're... Like I said, your initials start with P and B. But there's this middle island, I guess a kind of a volcano as they're calling it, that I can see someone do like maybe a backside 360 over, frontside 360 over, you know, kickflip. You know, it's going to be challenging. There's even like a couple chin ramp inspired quarter pipes on top of quarter pipes, you know, stuff like that. So it would be fun to watch, but very in line with what we've seen before. You know, no nothing, nothing too shocking. Whereas, whew, the street course proposal, that looks like, it looks like they could have, they could have, seriously, legit, have a, a street doubles or triples or quadruples event to it. You see the size of that beast? Huge. Almost with a silent H, huge. I hope... I hope that just gets approved. I hope they approve that design. Just hurry up. Yeah, let's go. We need to break ground. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. We've got to gotta go. We've got to go. Because that would be so fun just to watch a single skater, just one, try and conquer that whole thing. 
and not get completely winded and exhausted in the process. It has a bunch of round rails and square rails, bunch of stairs, kickers. I I mean, I think what happened, it almost looks like like they clicked all, you know, like in design programs and I'm and I'm not 100% sure, but you you click on the options you want. <laughs> they checked all those boxes, up, just fill all. And the design of the Tokyo 2020 courses was overseen by Joe Siaglia with Bill Minadeo overseeing construction. I'm not sure if I pronounced their names incorrectly or not, but here's what they said about the layout. Quote, the design for the skateboarding street and park courses at the Tokyo 2020 Games is intended to far exceed anything that has ever been built for professional skateboarding competition, said Siaglia. So one key word that stood out for me in that comment was far. From what I've seen so far, I think the street course would definitely achieve that. If this goes through, which I'm hoping, I'm crossing my, if both hands are crossed right now. Because <laughs> it's so insane. It's such a crazy park. If this goes through, they can go ahead and check off that quote unquote far exceed uh, checkbox. I wouldn't hate seeing that at all. Especially for something as big as the Olympics. You know, you got to have something special. But remember when I asked earlier, how big is too big of a park? I had that same question pop into my head for this one, too. So big. Street doubles, street triples. Or is it just going to be like, you know, everyone just, you know, best trick, go. All skaters on at one time. Just chaos. It's so big. Almost too big. But I want this. <laughs> I want this to happen. I want to see, you know, it, it's going to be so cool to see how skaters adjust to that course. I mean, I'm sure at first I'm going, like, whoa, what the hell is going on? Or it could be that they spent all this time setting up this entire course and like 95% of the skaters just skate this one little spot, like 5% in the corner because that's the where they feel most comfortable and maybe they could rack up the most points for them with, you know. Oh. But either way, though, like I said, I want to see skaters get creative as hell, but then also have a challenge like they've never experienced before. They're like they something they are going to ride is going to far exceed what they've experienced before. You know, what I mean, it only makes sense, right? They will be competing and representing their country and an entire country, actually, and getting a gold medal, one that will be has to be earned. What a crazy debut it's going to be, though. Yes, it was delayed a whole year. All the skaters are going to be a year older. Some of them, at least that have, are in the running, that looks like they've been training. Others, maybe not. But either way, it's going to be it's going to be fun. So give the layout a look. Let me know what you think. I'm very curious to hear. It. Very curious. But I'm, I'm pretty damn excited now. I'm. I was always already excited. I know I mentioned it on other episodes, but I'm all in. I want to see the you know skateboard in the Olympics, and I want to see breakdance in the Olympics. I want to just do it all, whatever. But Tokyo Olympic Street Competition is set for July 25th and 6 or 26, while the park is scheduled for August 4th and 5th. So mark your calendars. I'm doing it. I can't wait. So that's all I've got for this week. As usual, thanks for tuning in and your continued support. It truly does mean the world to me. I appreciate every single week you guys tuning in, and I will talk to you next Tuesday. See ya.